Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to talk about the top 7 reasons why you get that notorious <gasps> flat spot when you go driving your vintage Volkswagen. Let's get to it. So in no particular order, I'm going to go down this list of seven problems that will give you that notorious flat spot in your vintage Volkswagen. Now guys, again, not in any order, not one could be five, five could be one. Uh, you know, this is just, I'm throwing it out there for you guys so you guys can take this in and go home and go into your garage and work on your Beetle with. So if there's anything in this list that you think that I missed or you want to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Uh, this is an open forum. We want everybody to have as much knowledge as possible. And uh, yeah, get rocking and rolling on your bug and getting it to run right. Before we get to the top seven, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll be bringing you videos like this each and every week to keep your vintage Volkswagen Beetle alive. So number one, carb to distributor combination. Many people have the 1600 dual port engine. It's pretty common in the, uh, the later engines from 71 onward where uh, the dual port engines got the 34 picked carburetor. And a lot of times people will co combine the 009 distributor to that carburetor and there is a notorious flat spot with those that combination. So it is ideal to get the, vac the correct vacuum distributor uh, for that carburetor and it's it's just it's a constant problem sometimes you win sometimes you lose it depends what kind of 009 you get if you get a German you're usually okay but uh, with a lot of stuff that's on the market today with the aftermarket um, you know you might be getting a China or some sort of uh, replica of that German distributor of the 009 and you're going to get that notorious flat spot so that's a very common problem right off the bat pretty simple to fix uh, maybe just change the distributor uh, or so what some people do is they might go back to an earlier carburetor, they get a different mounting plate uh, for the, car, the top of the manifold to place an earlier carb on, and sometimes that does, uh, that does better for you. So, uh, but yeah, number one, definitely carb to distributor combination. Check even also for your earlier years, there's books and there's a lot of online information out there of what carb was meant to be with your distributor, so, um, or vice versa. So, all right, that's number one. Number two, you want to check your accelerator pump. Your accelerator pump is on the side of the carburetor over here. As you can see, the square piece right here, very common on the carburetors. If you have a really early carburetor from like say a split window era, there is no accelerator pump. Uh, so, but most people will have an accelerator pump. You're going to want to take the screws off, take a look at the gasket here, make sure everything's in order. If the gasket is brittle, you're going to want to replace that. If the spring is shot, you're going to want to replace that as well. And what this does is gives you that nice clean shot down into the top of the carburetor. So if you're having an issue and uh, you want to check and see that flow, uh, the good thing is to turn your car off, get into the back, get to the, the back of the engine compartment, take the air cleaner off and look down the carburetor. You want to take the, the top of the carb off and pull the accelerator arm and take a look and see if that little tube, you know, it looks like a faucet tube, is giving you a good shot right down uh, the carb and you don't want it off to the side, you don't want it splattering off to the inside here of the carb, you want it to be a good shot straight down into the carburetor. If it splatters and if it's like it's sputtering and it, it's got a broken flow, that could be a good indication that your accelerator pump needs to be either replaced uh, or serviced to some degree. Okay. That's number two. Number three, the side jet. On most carburetors, you're gonna have a jet here. This carb actually has two jets right here on the side. These are eight millimeter little jets. So I'm gonna take one of these out here for you. Okay, so it looks just like that. You see this jet here? And you see that there's holes on the side and there's a hole in the front. And so that stream of, of fuel needs to shoot out and has to be a clear stream and it has to be a nice free flowing stream. So a lot of times this gets dirty with a little bit of grit. All it takes is a little speck of sand, a little speck of dirt that can pass through the fuel system, fuel lines even, and get into this little jet. So just get yourself some carb cleaner, start shooting some carb cleaner on all the little holes and make sure you see a nice flow come out the front of this jet. Put it back in. Sometimes that's all it takes, uh, but usually it, it goes a little deeper than that. But uh, so yeah, the side jet, that's number three. Number four, your automatic choke. So on the side of the carburetor here, 
you see the automatic choke right here. Now this is electronically activated, so you might wanna check that first. Sometimes if you don't have any juice going to the choke, you might have an issue there. But usually what happens with this is that the choke is working, uh, but it's coming off too soon. So the car's cold, you turn the car on, the choke is activated, it's, it's keeping this butterfly down, okay? You're choking the carb, choking the, uh, the engine. And so basically it's getting the car to warm up, okay? So it's gonna run higher, and what happens is then this might back off too soon before the car is fully at optimal temperature. And then what happens is then you go hit the pedal and it, you hit a flat spot. Sounds great when it's on choke and you can hit the throttle, everything's nice and smooth, but once this choke comes off a little too early, you might hit that flat spot because it's just not up to right temperature yet. So the best thing to do is to then just loosen these little screws. One, two, three. And there's three notches up top here on the top of the carb and you wanna rotate this until you get the right uh, timing for the choke to come off. Uh, again, you can look at a lot of the books online, a lot of the specs uh, on how to uh, um, make this work right. Uh, but for, you know, for the sake of this video, just trying to keep it concise and short. Uh, if anyone wants to chime in in a little more detail, you're more than welcome to, but that's basically what it comes down to. Also, you gotta look at the spring that's also in here. This spring might be shot as well. So you might wanna take this whole thing off uh, again, take pictures if you've never done it before, so you want to put it back together correctly. You don't want to get lost. And if the spring in there is not good, you might have to replace that as well. So, uh, But yeah, it usually comes down to it's just not adjusted correctly, so you just have to turn this a little counterclockwise to, uh, to bring the richness up. So once you do that, uh, that'll make then the, uh, the timing of the choke work better for your carburetor. Number five, you have junk inside all of your jets in the carburetor. So I have a video on how to express clean your carb where my good friend Lucky Larry breaks down a carburetor for us and he starts getting into all the little jets that are inside this sucker and you pull out all these little BBs. Uh, a lot of people do not take out those little balls to, you know, uh, to inspect. Uh, so you, you, it is a good idea to do that. You want to break this thing completely down. You maybe want to dunk the carb in like a carb dip overnight. Um, now people will tell me, oh, but I bought a brand new carburetor. It, should not, it shouldn't have this problem. But nah, I've seen it many, many times. A brand new carb, even a brand new uh, rebuilt carb that you might get from a service somewhere might have junk in it. You don't know where the carb has been, how long it's been sitting on a shelf, and what it has, what kind of temperature changes it's gone through. Uh, so things build up, there's dust, there's debris, there's a lot of things that could happen. So even though it's a brand new carb, you know, you could still get, you know, crap in there. So the other thing to watch out for is you might clean this whole thing in and out, but if your fuel lines are clogged or, or rusty, say, and you are getting fuel through, but maybe inside the steel line through the chassis is all rusty and all that debris is breaking up from ethanol. Ethanol will definitely break up a lot of the debris and rust inside your fuel line, and it's pushing all the fine debris through the lines, through your fuel pump, and then in back into the carb. So you might clean this, everything works great for a short period of time, and then all of a sudden it comes back again. And also check back in the front uh, by your gas tank where the screen is inside uh, the gas tank where the fuel spigot is, and uh, inspect that screen or inspect inside the tank itself, your, your tank inside might have a lot of rust and debris in it. Um, so these are all things to check out. So, but definitely debris and, and a lot of dirt and whatever is inside your jets and uh, the car might need to be completely broken down and, uh, and cleaned. So check out that video that I have. I did that several years ago. Number six, you might have a vacuum leak. So you wanna check the base of the carb the gasket that's under there, or maybe sometimes just the carb has to be tightened a little bit uh, underneath where it mounts to the manifold. So check that gasket too. Sometimes those paper gaskets, you know, they're not the greatest material anymore, so they might be deteriorating. Uh, so you wanna check that gasket. You also wanna check the, uh, the manifold to the heads. And uh, maybe the manifold is not tightened enough uh, on the heads, or maybe the gasket there also is not in good shape, maybe the gasket, the circular gasket on the earlier engines is crushed, or the, the dual port engines, you know, have that, that wider gasket with the two holes in it, and maybe that's not lined up correctly. So the way to check and see if you have a vacuum leak is if you either spray water or carb cleaner on the certain sections of these connections. Again, base of the carb, manifold onto the head, and if you hear a difference in the engine as you're spraying, 
uh, that's a good indication then you have a vacuum leak. So you'll definitely hear it, uh, you know, the, the, the sounds of the engine up or down um, when it's running. So then you might have a vacuum leak. So sometimes it's just tightening the nuts or again, you have to take the, replace the gaskets. So, and number seven on this list, it could be electrical. It could be bad points. It could be a bad cap. Check your electrical components on your distributor. Check your wires. Check your plugs. You know, that sort of thing. The most common electrical sections uh, in, in your engine compartment. Just take a look at things. Make sure there's no wires that are frayed or anything that looks corroded or anything that looks old and needs to be replaced. Maybe the ends of the wires just need to be replaced and spliced with new ends. So things like that could possibly be an, a, a hesitation as well. Uh, usually, you know, with your points, a 16 thousandths uh, gap on the points. If you have to file the points, you could always put a little file in there. Uh, to get those points cleaned. I always like to go with an electronic ignition so you don't have to worry about points too much. Uh, so, but yeah, those are your uh, issues. Those are your seven issues that you will probably come across when it comes to getting rid of that notorious <laughs> flat spot in your Beetle. Uh, if you guys have anything to add, please be sure to leave it in the comment section below. Again, open forum. Would love to hear your thoughts. If I missed anything, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, and uh, if you guys have any other issues, please give me uh, an email, chris at classicvwbugs.com. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. I get, I get hundreds of emails every day, and it's tough to answer them all. Uh, so some people want to send me some videos of, of their issues that they have with their Beetle because it's tough for me to diagnose just through email. So if you want to send me a video, Please be sure to turn your camera, your phone wide, not vertically. Uh, wide is a much better viewing option. Um, and uh, the best way to do it is to not send it to my email because those files are huge. Upload it to YouTube and send me the link. That's probably the best way to do it. So I try to help you as best I can. All right, guys, that's the video for today. Again, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.